All right, so here we have a 2014 Chrysler Town & Country. Uh, we got a couple things going on with this one. One would be the oil pressure sensor is stuck at 90 PSI, and it's not moving at all with the fluctuation of the engine. The other one is, is when we look down to our filter housing down here, we see a puddle of oil. So that's pretty common to tell us that the, the oil filter housing and cooler, that's also where the pressure sensor is. So we're going to go ahead and uh, tear this thing down and, and replace that. So the first thing we want to do is remove our engine cover. All right, so we're just going to pull up on it. We want to remove our air intake tube on our top of our filter housing. We just got a couple clips. All right, let's go ahead and just pop that off. A little electrical connector here for our air ambient temperature. All right, so now we want to go ahead and get our intake off. So we have a bracket back here we need to remove. There's a, a 10 millimeter, uh, should be here. Uh, we just found it floating around. Someone's obviously been into this before, so we'll go ahead and, uh, and take this back one off. We're gonna move some of our, our wires out of the way. We need to get underneath this bolt, there's a Another stud we need to get to. Let's see. All right, so we want to remove this stud here. It is a, I'm going to use a 13 millimeter. It could be a half or a 13. I have a deep well socket. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove some of our electrical connections. We'll go ahead and lay this off to the side. Go ahead and take our vacuum lines off and just push them back a little bit. All right, so when I have a hose that I can't get off, what I do is just use a pair of pliers and twist it. You can hear it break free. Just keep on removing some hoses. Hold down for our radiator hose. We'll go ahead and pop that out. All right, so we should have two little 10 millimeter bolts in this bracket. You can kind of see they're not even lined up to the bracket and the bolts are missing there. So we'll have to address that once we uh, put it back together. All right, so now we want to remove, we have a bunch of bolts uh, right around the center of the intake. All right, so they are eight millimeter. All right, we'll just go ahead and lift it up, see if we got anything else connected. Oh, all right. Yeah, so we got a little uh, insulating cover. We'll go ahead and remove that. 
We got a lot of dust and everything. We should probably uh, blow all this stuff off before we uh, start breaking into the motor. All right, just to keep us safe uh, from getting debris in the motor, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some paper towels in our intake. All right, with some, uh, some more inspection, we have our oil filter housing here. And when we look down in there, we can see a puddle of oil. So this is where our oil was leaking off the back of the vehicle. So we need to go ahead and check and see what to, uh, what's going on there. So we're gonna need to pull the intake off to be able to get to that, our lower intake, All right? So we're gonna have a couple eight millimeters. First thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna unplug all of our injectors and our fuel line and then we'll be able to remove that piece. So we'll go ahead and start uh, taking some connections down. All right, so we have our fuel line. All right, this is gonna be pressurized. All right, so just kinda of wanna watch ourselves. We wanna push it forward and then we have this tab here. And we just wanna wiggle it back. All right, so it might squirt fuel all right, we have some O-rings that popped off. All right, so we have our eight millimeter bolts. We'll go ahead and take those out. I'm just gonna take some bags, just in case some debris comes falling off the bottom. Wanna make sure it doesn't end up inside the engine. All right, looks like we have a hold down right here for our wire. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and pick our intake up. All right, so now we're ready to replace our oil filter housing and cooler. All right, so the first thing we're gonna have to do is we need to drain the coolant. All right, so we're gonna get underneath the car and uh, find the petcock to drain the coolant out because we have coolant flowing through. We have a line right here and then we have the other going into the motor. All right, so we'll go ahead and, and start draining that now. All right, so here we are under the car. Uh, this is the driver's side of the radiator. We have our petcock right here with our little tube. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put a little piece of hose on there to kind of direct the coolant out into my catch can so it doesn't end up inside the frame rail. And I'm gonna use a pair of small channel locks and go ahead and loosen it. And I do have the radiator cap off. Try to help it flow out. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and remove our electrical connections. All right, so we want to just go ahead and we have two of them. There's one. Oh, 
I had shit in the sensor. Right, and this one has a safety. Yeah, our other one. It looks like that sensor is leaking. All right, so now we're ready to remove our oil cooler and filter housing. All right, so we have some inverted torques. Uh, so these are going to be an E8. All right, so it looks like we have five of them. We'll go ahead and uh, loosen those up now. because right, we got to lift this out and we have one more hose connection there we want to do so just want to make sure we don't get anything in there all right so we just kind of wiggle it out our hose clamp All right, so now that we have our oil cooler out, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up. You can see all this old oil. You can kind of tell it was leaking right here. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and just pack some paper towels down there and try to at least do my best to clean it up. All right, so here we have our new uh, cooler and filter housing that we got from Auto Parts Direct to you. All right, so we just want to verify it's the same. And we're fixing our problem. So you can see we were probably leaking from, there's an O-ring right there, but it's pretty pressed even, where you can see this one has got a little ridge, so there'll be some compression. Same way with these bottom ones here. Right, they're pretty flat, they're all squished out, where if you look at the new ones, they're, they're uh, raised, so they'll have some, some holding power there. All right, so looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and install our new one now. All right, so now we're ready to install our new uh, oil housing and cooler. I'm just going to take a little razor blade. I just feel a little kind of groove here, build up. I'm just going to kind of just scrape it off and get that surface nice. All right, so we'll go ahead and set our cooler in. Something we could do is we could lube this, this gasket up, this little O-ring right here, uh, before we put it in. That will help it go in. Let me just put a little oil on it. All right, so I just lube that O-ring up a little bit. We'll go ahead and push it into its spot. All right, we're going to kind of push on this side because this is the O-ring we need to go down in. bolts started definitely getting that o-ring seated down in there until it bottoms out is a must to get it lined up All right, so we need to do 106 inch pounds on our inverted torques. All right, so I'm just going to do a square pattern, uh, and then I'll have my fifth one over to the side. So it's just kind of a cross pattern. I'm starting on the side with the most of the O-rings.
All right, so I'm just gonna bump it up like a pound or two or another inch pound or two and just go over it one more time. There's a hold down right here on this hose. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use my little pry tool. We'll get that hold down off. All right, so now we'll go ahead and reconnect our coolant line. All right, push our hold down back in. All right, so we got our electrical connections. Go ahead and put those back on. All right, so before we forget, we do need to put our, our pet cock back in our radiator. So I'm going to go ahead and just reach down here and put our pet cock back in. All right, so here we have our lower intake. Where'd that bolt come from? All right, so we're going to go ahead and replace our gaskets uh, that go to the cylinder head. So we got these gaskets from Auto Parts Direct U. We'll go ahead and uh, pop out the originals. All right, so we're ready to install our lower intake. All right, so I just have a, little, a rag with some brake clean. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of clean up right here on the mounting surface. And I'm just going to run a razor over it just to kind of make sure it's smooth. Ready to set our lower intake manifold on. All right, so now that we have our intake on, we torqued it down. The torque is 106 inch pounds. There is a torque sequence, all right? So you wanna start right here with number one. Then you wanna move over here for number two. Then over here for number three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So you want to do that sequence at 106 inch pounds. All right, so now we want to go ahead, we have our lower intake on, we're going to go ahead and put our, our fuel line. All right, I believe it was down below this way. All right, so it just, all right, so now we'll go ahead and lay out our Injectors. Goes like that, right? All right, so we're ready to put our 
intake on. We'll go ahead and I got some new gaskets from Auto Parts Direct U. We'll go ahead and put those on. All right, so now we're ready to put our intake on. All right, so now we need to put our, our bracket back on. All right, go ahead and put our hold down back on, our wire hold down. All of our clips and connectors. Our two studs. This is for our cover that goes on, so let's go back on the back here, on our, the back of our valve cover. Right, this is our PCV. We'll kind of route it through. And now we're ready for our air box and our, and our intake snorkel. Right, and those two studs in the back that we just put on the valve cover, that's where, that's where this box snaps into. Right, we have our connector for our ambient air temperature. Our breather. Fasten our air box back. We did forget two vacuum lines. All right, so we have one here and then the other one for our brake booster. All right, our last thing will be this cover. All right, so now that we got everything back together, uh, the one thing we need to do is add coolant because we had to drain the coolant out of the oil uh, cooler filter housing, right? So we'll go ahead and fill her up. We, um, this does take a specific uh, antifreeze. We went ahead and got it from Mopar, all right? So we'll go ahead and fill it up, let it warm up, adjust the fluid, uh, and then take it for a test ride. 